Hello there, this is the voice of Matt Redman again and I'm welcoming you to this fourth episode about the 10 bass Gibson style U hot guitar. If you haven't seen episodes 1 to 3, uh, which include details about how it's tuned and the history of the instrument, playing melodies and accompaniments, amongst other subjects, I do encourage you to do so as I'll be referencing things from those today. I'm going to focus on the chromatic advantage of this re-entrant tuning of the instrument, what it offers me as a flexible improvising musician when authentically interpreting popular music of the period, being 1900s to 1930s, from which it dates. So here I am playing an instrument from 1912, and what better way to start than with some of the 1905 song My Gal Sal, the first ever to appear in a talky film, of course, The Jazz Singer. <laughs> Just a thought about another thing, actually. It really does have so much sympathetic resonance in every key. It makes everything that you're playing on the harp guitar sound very even and equally resonant. And that's truly what's missing, in my opinion, from, for example, six bass diatonic harp guitars and regular tuned six string guitars. When watching so many excellently executed six to 10 bass harp guitar videos on the internet of these lovely crafted performance pieces, I'm always left saying, now you've just played that in G, please play it in G flat, or if it's in C, now please play it in D flat, or even if it's in D, just play it in A, with all keys retaining the use of an equal number of bass strings. Now, while I appreciate that full chromaticism without retuning may not be the goal of all other harp guitarists, such as on the piano or piano accordion, for example, I want to demonstrate that I find it to be a major advantage of the tuning of this instrument and especially to the musicians in the time it was conceived, used and their shoes I place myself in. I hope these views are controversial and if you disagree then please do give it a thumbs down and discuss in the comments. To demonstrate what I was saying right at the beginning about talking about this tuning being chromatic. So if we take something like in the previous episode, what well, I've just been playing, Keep the Home Fires Burning. Etc. You know, it's a very, very, very popular song. So that was published in numerous keys for singers. And so the next most common key might be G. I'm not going to reach you, I'm just going to play. G flat, somebody you play with somebody and you say, Oh, sorry, no, that's a little bit high, but F's maybe a bit too low. Can we play in G flat? And on a 10 bass style, you in the bone tuning, yes, you can. It's gonna go. equal resonance hasn't it compared to G that so many diatonic harp guitars and obviously six string guitars don't have I mean I really think so let's pick any key at random B major B for Bravo maybe da, da, de, da, de.
bit, bit low for me to hum there. Also, my brain had to engage. But I, I personally believe it does resonate equally in all keys and anywhere on the neck as well. That's high up in B. And let's play it low down in C, for example. I've only been playing this instrument a very short amount of time. I'm getting there. The way that I interpret music, the flexibility that I desire from music, and to some extent the challenge, that's the only way to be. And I believe that it's the best instrument for me to really have a go and master the way that I want. Yeah, I really do.